we would like to honor our Canadian citizens with the singing of O Canada first. And then we will honor our USA citizens with the song America. O Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all thy sons command with glowing hearts we see thee rise the true north strong and free from far and wide o oh canada we stand on guard for thee God keep our land glorious and free. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. My country, tis of the sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of thy pilgrim's pride. From every mountain side, let freedom ring. for March 16th, 2021. Um, a couple of announcements that I have is a board meeting the 25th at noon on Zoom. And then uh, March 30th, we are gonna go back to live meetings at the Eagles okay. at noon on Tuesday. And so. we're gonna do the Zoom also, correct? No. No? I don't think so. I can uh, record it as usual. Yeah. And then send it out. Yes. Okay. So, uh, but, it would seem to me that if we, there's going to be people that are still nervous, so it would be good yeah. if we did Zoom yeah. also. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't, I mean, it'd be up to Dwayne to decide how we're doing. We'd have to kind of practice a little bit, I think. Hey, um, so, well, I'll do it with my computer. Me? Yeah, just me looking. Well, we'd have to try to try. Uh, you know, again. that's why hey, we we'll start at the end of the ten to four on the. Um, Lloyd mute. Lloyd. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Uh, the end of the month for Lisa Ward, so we kind of have a week to play around before we start. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, let's go. Concessions. Bob, any announcements? Fantastic Friday at Safeway getting started. We took in uh, $2,400, and that, that was by far uh, the better than the best Hey, we've had it Safeway right. last year. We only did seventeen hundred, so uh, it was a fantastic day. The weather was perfect. No wind. Little sunshine. wasn't cold. Got a lot of help. We had uh, twenty five lions uh, help with that day, and it went fantastic. I just hope we can maintain it. The weather's not going to cooperate like this Saturday or Friday is supposed to be about. 70% chance of rain. So we're planning on putting up the walls of the canopies and the awning and prepare for maybe a few showers. Hopefully okay. we won't get a monsoon like we got last year. That one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> Jane put a sign up, Jeannie, on uh, the internet and people can go in. I see, looks like the first two shifts are pretty much covered already. And uh, so we got to get people to to get linked into that. It's just a very simple process. 
I want to thank Jane for developing that. That would be okay. access. Lloyd won't have to make so many phone calls. So, uh, yeah, we're ready to go. We'll do it again this uh, Friday. Uh, we'll set up at 9 and start selling by 10. That's our goal. And so, word of mouth, uh, invite other lions that haven't been to the one of the sessions at Safeway, and let's keep it going and try to get everybody involved. I, I was a lot of new faces last time. It was great. Yeah. I'll put it back up on Facebook again, too. Okay, great. Super. You can still call Lloyd if yep. you have to. Okay, so Lloyd, unmute yourself. Okay. Okay. Uh, we still need people. Can you hear me? Yes. Still need people for, for two to four and four to six. Okay. All everybody else is filled up. Okay. I could probably do four to six. I might be a few minutes late. Okay. <clears throat> Did that email go out to all the members? <clears throat> Jay. It went out to all the members that I had accurate emails for. And of course, Cindy has it all 100% updated, right, Cindy? It is updated. Uh, there are five that I'm still struggling to find what the mm. correct emails are. Mm. So, out of 163. That's not bad. There's still bad. five that I'm, I'm still struggling with. So, I'll see if I can't work on those five. Okay. All right. So if you want to work, have some of that. Follow. I got an announcement. Okay. The, uh, the, the fish folly is April 24th from 8, 8 to 6. You have to wear a mask and you'll have uh, about six sessions. And they're going to call me back when we pick up the hot dogs. And I think they furnish the chips too, don't they? <clears throat> yes. Chips and a drink. Okay. okay. Yeah, they're both calling me back when we pick up the hot dogs. but. And then we sell uh, hamburgers. We need to get uh, some more. We need help that day too. For the what is That's help a the kids with, Yeah. That's what's Saturday, the 24th of April. The last time we did that, we did biscuits and gravy, I think, in the morning, didn't we? Yes, we did. Okay. Yeah. And it only takes about two people to run it, the, the wagon or whatever's there. So. Okay. All right. So okay, that's we need people to help with kids with the fishing poles, too. Yeah. Okay. Right. And where where was that? Down Lake Tacktawea, there at Martin's Dock. Okay. All right. Anything else for concessions? Okay. Yeah. Takes care of. Uh, let's do uh, Greg for anything <coughs> on uh, membership. A little bit. Um, we still have about no oh, twelve thirteen. Uh, members out of 171 that are not caught up on their dues. Okay. Uh, Dolly and I have been working on that. We will be sending out another uh, news notice to those individuals. Uh, big thing to remember, up till the end of June, there's no initiation fee to uh, Lions Clubs International. And when we have our board meeting uh, next week, I'm going to ask that uh, the board approve leaving the uh, membership dues at 70 through the end of the year for okay. new members coming in and for those that are, are still delinquent. A little incentive to get new members <coughs> in and also uh, retain the ones that are a little bit behind. Okay. And so far, uh, we we will have drops like we normally do. Okay. Rough guess, I'm guessing seven, maybe six or seven at the most. Okay. 
Okay. <coughs> All right. Thanks. Thanks, Greg. Uh, Kim Botero, anything on Zoom? Zoom conference coming up April 6th, Tuesday night, 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, Governor Doug Harvey and First Vice District Governor uh, Marilyn Patterson will be there to talk about their the present year and the year to come. Talk about okay. things we're going to come up with. Uh, and that's the Zoom meeting, right, Ken? I mean, the Zone meeting? Zone meeting is April 6th. Yeah. She's going to go over. But I'm on Zoom. 7 o'clock on Zoom. Okay. All right. Okay, any, any uh, sunshine report today on anybody? Al? Well, everybody had something to say about everybody, the everybody should be sitting down. My brother's results showed his heart back at 68%, which is in the normal range. Yay! Yeah. So he said, uh, he asked the doctor, he says, well, you're saying this six months of relaxing and clean living has healed my heart? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe. maybe one year would do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this should have been a shock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you need half your sad bucks? Oh, uh, may I say something? Okay, wait. Okay, Doug. <laughs> Go ahead, Doug. I'd just like to say something quickly about our district. Uh, just let everybody know again that our district spring conference is May 7th and 8th. And uh, because of the virus, the first part of it, 7th, which is a Friday, be on Zoom. The good news is that we're going to be able to dance as lions in cage and roar with gusto on Saturday the 8th, because I have rented the, uh, or reserved the, both of the uh, pavilions at Tam O'Shannon Park. So a lot of our activities we're going to be able to do live at Tam O'Shannon Park on Saturday the 8th from about 10 o'clock till about 4 o'clock. And I'm inviting everybody to come because we're not going to charge. And anybody that comes in their Lions uniform will be fed and get to participate in all the festivities. Getting back to the conference, one of our guest speakers at the conference will be from Nice to the Blind. Chad is here today to talk to everybody about the nice and the blind. But there's a lot of things coming up as this is our new uh, uh, section of our district. And we want to make sure that everybody understands what it is all about. So that'll be coming up at our district conference as well. So everybody mark it on your calendars for the Zoom meeting on Friday the 8th and 7th, but Saturday the 8th will be at Tamil Shadow Bar live and in person. So we're right. excited about that. Thank you. And it's free. Uh, Leroy. President Darlene, fellow Lions. Um, <laughs> now that's what I have is, is, is pertaining to the past presidents. We will be having our past presidents meeting uh, via Zoom on March 30th at 6.30. We'll be sending out the uh, Zoom link uh, at some point. Um, Past presidents, there's a couple of items that we need possibly before then. Um, um, Marilyn and Cindy have been, and others, I think, have been trying to um, get, um, find people who are wanting to serve in, as an officer. And the last list I have, there's still a few items, I think, that, that we need to fill. Um, we're looking for two lion tamers. And yeah, those have been filled. Yeah, they've been filled. Okay, good. Uh, Wait, we been... just need a third vice president. What's that? We just need a third vice president. And we have uh, on my list. I have three nominees, possibly. So, uh, what about what about tail twister? Did did uh, do we need a tail twister? No, we're full. We're good. So hey, so past presidents, um, just uh, uh, remember on for March thirtieth and. We'll get this done. It's going to be a little bit different, but um, Ken. I, uh, Cindy, after our conversation last night, Marty and I have decided we'll just be uh, uh, lion tamers as the uh, substitutes. Uh, seems like 
they've already recruited people for the position. So we would just go ahead and sign off and become uh, substitutes. Okay. So there is two positions open. <laughs> there are two positions open. Yeah, I yeah. believe Sharon is one of the new tail twisters or lion okay. tamer. Okay, Ken, we're not supposed to give names until after the president's meeting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Any happier sad bucks? Oh, I, I, I was done. Oh, okay. No, okay. Um, um, so, so back to back to needing a couple of tail twisters. Past presidents, if you have somebody you're talking to, um, some suggestions for us on the 30th. And then starting in April after our meeting, our first Tuesday in April, then we will run the nominations for three succeeding weeks per our uh, constitutional bylaws. And uh, then we'll go from there. So um, meeting's important on the 30th. Um, and hopefully to see all the past presidents there. Thanks. I'm done now. Thanks. Okay. Um, oh, hey, Darlene. Yeah. Oh, don't forget. Sorry to interrupt you again. Um, as 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 the, the incoming immediate past president, you will you will be invited. All right. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Marilyn. <laughs> but you gotta just... turn your face around. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> okay. I just wanted to tag on to Hal because I was uh, conversing with Pat Palmer and uh, I asked him a question and his response was, I hardly want to do that. And so because of that, I thought, well, that's the reason is because he had good news. So I was encouraged by his answer when we had a little email back and forth. All right. Okay. Dolly? Hello. Just want to say hi. Um, Candyland is done. <laughs> um, anyway, I just wanted to make a comment that the spouse and significant other campaign is still on. So those of you who have a spouse or someone else in your household, let's see if you want to bring them aboard. And even if they do one simple project or a service project a year, it would be great to have them aboard. All right. Any other happy or sad books? Uh, Terry, we're yeah, um, President Darlene, the last guest. Uh, yeah, a couple of our happy dollar for had coffee the other day with a couple of lions that I hadn't seen in a while. Uh, one of them was Reineke, but he doesn't count. Uh, <laughs> and, but the other one was John Claypool and his uh, John K. And I, God only knows how you say his last name, but uh, he just goes by John K. Anyway, we had coffee one day together, and it was nice to see people again. And it's nice to see Mike Parker here. Oh, right. yes. yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah, Mike. Uh, Steve? <coughs> Johnston? Okay. Anybody else? Lloyd? Yeah. I have a happy and a sad dollar. The sad dollar, well, both my daughter and son-in-law got the COVID mm -hmm. with one day apart. So at least they were together. They didn't have to separate too much. The sad part was their son that lives in Germany came over to spend two weeks with them, and last night was the first night he got to go in the house and see him because they were over. It. But he's on his way home now, and they're recovering. They don't seem to have any after effects, so that's the good news. Good. Good. All right. Anybody else? On happy, happy or sad bucks? Okay, Gina, I'm going to turn the meeting over to you then. All right. Well, thank you, Darlene. Uh, and uh, hello, fellow Lions. Um, we have a speaker this morning, uh, this afternoon. Excuse me, it is afternoon. Uh, we're going to have to get used to getting back into the uh, proper address, and I should have done that. I planned on doing that, but it kind of took me off guard. So uh, shame on me. I'll pay my quarter somewhere. But... Uh, Good afternoon, everybody. Um, our speaker today is a 1993 graduate from R.A. Long High School. He went to Central Washington University and lived in Spokane for 18 years. He worked for eight, uh, KHQ Television, Red Lion Hotels, and he did some camera and graphics work for ESPN. Now, back in this area, he and his dad, Clifford Lewis, are members of the Early Bird Lions. 
Please help me give a warm welcome to District G, Knights of the Blind Chairperson, Chad Lewis. Hey, Chad! Thank you. Thanks, guys. Um, so thanks, Gina, uh, Darlene, Dolly, Doug, and Ken, as well as many of you who probably know who I am or my dad is. And um, so just before I talk about Nights of the Blind, just real quick, uh, um, also a lot of you know my brother, Jeremy Lewis, who went blind at 17 with a disease called Labors. And the doctors said at age 25 that uh, I would not uh, inherit that disease. Well, the doctor was wrong. He, he played the wrong cards. So I went blind at 44 with a diagnosis of the Labors disease. And some of people might think that's a bad thing. It's a disheartening thing. For me, it's just something that, it's just a way of life. I've had a good living. I've had a good life. And it's just going to continue as that. So I have central vision that's lost. It's kind of distorted. It's right in the middle of my eyes. I have peripheral vision. Um, some of you have maybe seen me run the lake. I work out all the time. I'm writing a book on my blindness. I travel the country, traveling to Peru next year. And so it really hasn't stopped my um, my life. Or the only thing it has stopped is I can't look at a woman and tell if she's looking back at me. So I might be single the rest of my life. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll just see what happens. Um, like I said, my brother, who was, he's also very successful. Uh, as a financial advisor, some of you might have your money involved with him. If not, let me know. I'll give you a card later on. Just kidding. And he has been and just enjoyed life. And that's the kind of way I pursued life as well as of going blind. Um, it kind of happened. I was working at uh, Alien A Casino. I was there since day one that it opened. And two, and a, two years ago, a little past two years, my eyes started going. I lived in Kelso, and over time, I would have players of mine at the casino say, Chad, I have a $1,000 on the line, but that was not a king. That was a two. And basically, they say my, my tail and not losing my job, but I knew something was wrong, so I went to get my eyes checked. And three weeks later, figured out I was going blind. I've maintained the same sight as I have now. And I really don't have anything to argue against and complain. I'm not one of those people that allows people to feel sorry for me. I don't accept that. I don't accept people who uh, pat myself on the back and say, you're an amazing person for doing this. I just, it's just normal to me now. And, but I appreciate when someone says, good job. Um, from there, the... Uh, like I said, um, I'm actually in the process of traveling to uh, Reno at the end of this month to meet with a publisher, and I'm being interviewed by the New York Times um, for traveling blind and the difficulties that those in smaller communities have with, uh, you know, Longview has paratransit, but you can't go to Kalama, you can't go to the center. Um, and so these are the kinds of things that Knights of the Blind are looking at of ways of making the, the partially sighted, the not, you know, fully non-sighted, all these people, the, the troubles and the, the, the uh, not travesties more along the lines of just difficulties they have on a daily basis of saying uh, there's people who live in Longview but their doctors are in rain near and there's no transportation to get them there. Or even just a technology. Um, when I became a Lions member, I had to have someone read me the orientation. And I do have magnifiers, but there are people who need to have where it's transcribed and maybe it's done digitally or it's done uh, in Braille. And I know that there are costs to that in some sense, but maybe those costs could be figured out in some, some manner. The biggest thing I think in regards to myself, and I'm very privileged in a way I have great support. I have 
Um, except when I have to do papers with my dad, he still won't let me drive. And that's a big problem. Because I should be able to drive the Lions van, right? That's what I'm saying. But I think getting the information out for people around this around the state and especially from G from Centro to, to to Vancouver is finding out the needs of these people as well. Something I talked with Ken and Doug about um, at the zone meeting is taking an effort to maybe bring people out to the out to a city corner or maybe checking into a hotel and having what they call blinders or or having um, some kind of apparatus to go around your eyes and experience what the process of just walking to the store or walking across the street, um, going into a library and checking out with their kids, say, who are four and five, and the parents are blind, what that experience is going and what's that like. I think that's one of the things that um, opened my eyes up when learning of others um, with different sight issues and what they have to go through. I think also the people who, I didn't realize this, but there are different levels of blindness. And um, I've had people, you know, question me um, about my sight because they see me walking the lake or running or exercising or, you know, lifting, doing a bench press, and I have nobody helping me out. They're like, well, you can see me, can't you? I'm like, well, I can see your body, but I can't see your face unless I get really close. And a lot of people don't like you when you're six inches from their face just to see what their face looks like. So just the enjoyment of, of learning, and that's my kind of my, my mind has been blown in just meeting these folks from Knights of the Blinds. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not yet, Knights of the Blinds. Sorry, I'm part of so many groups right now that I'm keeping my things in my mind. Um, this group is, I think, is a great possibility that fulfills so many needs to get people to understand not just giving glasses to those who need that may need glasses, but giving it the possibility of bringing in people who are blind to the organization, um, which I love dearly and enjoy being a part of. I think also realizing that it doesn't have to be a stiff, no fun, you know, deal where, say I come in um, with, with early bird lions, I get as much sarcasm directed towards me as I give it out and as much ribbing as I give it out as they give it to me, but also being taken seriously on both sides and having that respect. Um, we do have a group called... Um, it's a support group in Longview, Kelso. And actually with Zoom, they've been able to reach out to Idaho and to different parts of the state. And that's a group that has some amazing people who are teachers, who are lawyers, who are one gal's a nurse. And they would be great people to come into this group, this organization, and also to, to teach us to what blindness and even deafness and people who have diabetes are going through and to, to experience that. So going back real quick to going out, um, everyone that's I'm sure has heard about having those dinners in Portland. I know they have where they turn all the lights out and the waiters have, have, uh, the glasses that you can see the infrared glasses or whatever they're called. And I think those are a great, um, a great experience, but again, taking people out, maybe a group or so, maybe just the board, the board, or maybe we can pit the early birds versus the pioneers and have them on each corner. And and I've seen this actually done where it's just a fun competition, and you have a group of five and you have a controlled corner, but how you get across the street um, and not and and basically learn the the proper ways across this as someone who has taken the mobility and learned uh, the proper technique of, of looking both ways and, and listening for traffic and listening for signals. And um, I think that's just a, a positive move forward and, and learning. And um, I definitely want to, and I've already been asked by other Alliance groups to, to speak 
anything that you guys have information wise or ideas is greatly appreciated. I think um, the one thing I would I would also like to what I'm going to be doing with the um, support group is I'll be teaching them how to work out blind and giving techniques. And this is even something for people with disabilities at home who don't have the access of going to a gym. Um, by the way, Darlene, Jane says that you need to go to the gym with me more often. So I'm just putting that out there. Um, <laughs> that was a good laugh, guys. Come on. <laughs> I, I swim every day, Chad. <laughs> okay, okay. So, um, and just ending, and I, I'm sure you'll have some questions for me, guys, but um, I just really appreciate this platform, and I appreciate Doug and, and Ken and, um, allowing me to have this where I could hopefully bring some inspiration, but also bringing in different levels of members, young, older, you know, and I think that's the big key is and just on, we were talking about membership. And I think um, we just added a gal named Natalie who's in charge of the, the uh, Kelso uh, library and, and she'll be third vice president. And I think she'll be a great one. And, and just, I think coming together and getting those kind of members, I think is really a key to not just the success, but getting over was, I think it was 1250 as a goal on membership, and I think getting those kinds of folks is going to be just an added bonus um, to the group and to the Lions, and I think this will be a great platform once we get to be in person to talk as well as um, going to the states and nationals or international conferences as well. So I just hope it's something that grows from here and just kind of takes charge of everything and uh, is a success. Thanks, guys. Any any questions? Any questions? Big hey Chad. Tom. I, I I think she just moved over to Pioneer Lions. <laughs> Our third VP. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I do have a three year contract with the uh, early birds. <laughs> so you know, there are negotiations in two and a half years. Okay. <laughs> Uh, any other any questions? Well, thank you, Chad, very much for your presentation today. We appreciate it very much. Thank you. Uh, I will review then some announcements. Uh, Gina would like an awards meeting after today. So if you're on the awards committee, Gina would like to meet with you. Um, March 25th is board, board meeting at uh, noon. Um, starting March 30th, 30th uh, Tuesday the 30th, we'll start in person at the Eagles. There will be lunch, and we'll let you know on the cost. It'll be either nine or ten dollars. We're not sure yet. Um, and on the 30th, on a Zoom meeting at 6:30, there's the past presidents meeting. Uh, let's see, fish follies. Is that April 6th or April 24th? April 24th. Okay, April 24th from... Uh, eight, 8 to 6. 8 to 6. Um, zone meeting uh, on Zoom, April 6th at 7. District conference, uh, May 7th and 8th. 7th is on Zoom. 8th will be uh, at uh, Tamil Shander. So anything else that I have missed?